the reasons, I think, behind the regulatory reforms in Japan are interesting and unique um, to what was happening in Japan at the time. First of all, we had Shinya Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize for his work with induced pluripotent stem cells. And this created a tremendous amount of pride within the Japanese population about uh, the potential for Japan to distinguish itself in the field of regenerative medicine. And at the same time, Prime Minister Abe and his cabinet were grappling with how to revitalize the Japanese economy. And they seized upon the opportunity to take advantage of what was happening in regenerative medicine and create Japan as a, as, as an oppor as a, as a leader in the future of regenerative medicine. And they decided to do that in a very unique way by top-down recreating the regulatory re um, framework um, for regenerative medicines, particularly cell therapies in Japan, in a way which was really a grand experiment in, in policy-driven regulatory reform. And this was driven not only by this opportunity, but by um, the need for creating a new economic base, and also by um, the incredibly aging demographic of the Japanese population, um, which was serviced by a universal healthcare system in Japan. Um, and there was an, an ever-growing need to bring new um, therapeutics, new treatments for particularly this aging demographic in a way which would keep healthcare costs down throughout the length of, uh, uh, of these patients' lives. And so all of that co um, um, uh, uh, congealed, if you will, to an opportunity to create these new regulatory forms. And what happened in Japan is they decided to recreate the regulatory paradigm where there was always two pathways of commercialization in, in Japan, if you will, two pathways of clinical research. Um, and they, they tweaked them in very meaningful ways. So first of all, the much talked about revisions to the PMD Act provided for new expedited market access for cell-based therapies on a relatively small N of, of patient data, you can launch and get temporary or um, um, approval for your, for your product, get it on the market, perhaps even get it reimbursed, um, whilst at the same time funding your, uh, your, uh, your pivotal trials elsewhere in the world before you have to seek final approval in Japan. So this creates an opportunity to get to market with your product much faster in Japan than anywhere else in the world. So simultaneous to the changes that were taking place to the PMD Act at the same time, there was a brand new act brought into, pl brought into um, a play, which was called the Act for the Safety of Regenerative Medicine. And there the primary focus was on all of the clinical research that was being done primarily in academic facilities. But what was also happening in these hospitals was the manufacturing of cell-based therapies without any supervision or control um, uh, in place from the uh, Japanese regulatory agency called the, 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 the PMD uh, agency. And so in order for um, this regulatory reform to work, they wanted to be able to certify and to provide provisions over the safety of manufacturing of cell-based therapies going forward, particularly if they were going to go to market with very little clinical data. And so what they did was they provided, the Act for Safety of Regenerative Medicine provided not only for the provision of the PMD um, to be able to certify manufacturing facilities of cell therapies um, now, but also still provided a mechanism for clinical research and even commercialization of products without necessarily having to be reviewed or approved by the PMD um, 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 agency in Japan. And so you still have in Japan two pathways for commercializing products. The, um, the, the much talked about PMD agency approval um, mechanism and then the Act for the Safety of Regenerative Medicine um, pathway by, through which the manufacturing is certified by the PMD, but the products itself are simply provided to the marketplace either through the sponsoring hospitals or in a very few instances, sponsoring companies. So it's interesting, we, you know, the whole world was watching um, to see whether or not these, these massive regulatory reforms would in fact succeed in creating an industry, in bringing new therapeutic products to Japan, and creating the new economic base that Prime Minister Abe and his cabinet members were hoping would, would be realized. And um, I, I think the early indications are, um, over the past 
almost three years that the regulatory reforms have taken place is that um, they have seen, we, we're seeing signs of success. We're seeing the um, creation of a whole manufacturing infrastructure in Japan for regenerative medicines, particular cell therapies that didn't exist beforehand. We're seeing the um, same kind of infrastructure pop up for other ancillary services, clinical research services, etc. We also saw a first wave of foreign companies come into Japan um, um, uh, with local partners um, and execute pathways for clinical development and commercialization. There was a quiet period then over I think the next sort of 18 months while the next wave of partnership deals were being implemented. But what we're seeing now in addition to partnerships of Japanese strategic companies and foreign companies bringing in new products, we're also seeing foreign companies now tapping into that infrastructure to be able to take advantage of what's happening in Japan on their own, even without a national partner, which I think is one of the biggest signs of the maturity of infrastructure that was meant to be created by these regulatory reforms. So I think for foreign companies looking now to come into Japan and take advantage of of what's happening in Japan based on the regulatory reforms that, that, that occurred. There's a number of important considerations. You know, when we first went to Japan in 2013, when we signed a deal with Shiseido, the contract manufacturing infrastructure, for instance, that exists now, didn't exist then. So Shiseido was more or less forced to open up its own manufacturing facility to support at least its initial clinical trials in Japan. Now there's a variety of options with respect to clinical manufacturing um, and contract manufacturing there, for instance. Um, and in fact, the, the kind of infrastructure that has been created as a result of these regulatory reforms allows companies to go into Japan um, without a partner. So we're seeing now examples of foreign companies coming into Japan, leveraging a contract manufacturing relationship, a contract research organization um, relationship, and doing sponsoring their own clinical work even before they are able to secure a Japanese partnership. And that's something I would dare say wasn't possible a few years ago because of this emerging infrastructure. But the other uh, important consideration, not available necessarily for all companies, but is to decide whether or not you want to be on this PMD pathway or the ASRM pathway. We're in a bit of a unique situation because of our, our products are largely aesthetic and cosmetic. We have the ability, because we're not being driven by um, reimbursement considerations, we have the ability to be able to consider an ASRM pathway which allows us the same kind of um, early market access, if you will, but without necessarily having to get PMD um, approval. So I think there, there's important considerations there for clinical researchers and companies looking to take advantage of in Japan. But the other thing that's happened in Japan is not only are there strategic partners outward looking um, um, for products to, to, to bring into Japan um, and, and, and commercialize there and, and put on the market and make accessible to Japanese um, patients. But there's also a new attitude of, um, of Japanese investment that's looking to participate in this value building chain uh, in some way or another, either by the uh, in direct investment into foreign companies um, that are looking to position themselves in Japan or by the investment into joint ventures set up by Japanese nationals and foreign companies. So there's, a, there's an evolution in the investment um, uh, model as well, I think, that's happening in Japan, cautiously and conservatively, but is nonetheless making impacts on commercial decisions as companies decide how to um, take advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm.